Ndewo Umwebo, I have a question. Do you think it is proper for aged Igbo elders to remain in the diaspora and making events and basically, you know, living out their lives and enjoying the benefits of probably um, what they've worked or all their lives? Or should they go home and contribute to the Igbo society? their evil communities let's check out this video and we'll be back to analyze it Bundi members of this great club of our evil people uh, I know each Fred Obuto Bochama Isi Che Uche Odinfe Dialo Isi Che Uza Bundo Basically, this video was presented in my ordinary group chat yesterday and we had two opposing views. Now, each of those views are the first uh, group were of the opinion that Ndibo at this age, Ndibo and the, and the diaspora, that at this age, that they should no longer be in the diaspora, but they should basically be in their communities in their villages contributing to the betterment of that society. They could contribute by passing on relevant ancestral information to the next generation, reinstituting ancestral OB or ancestral shrines or handing down ancestral or for however thing that they're supposed to do that at their age they should be active members. Now we need to also remember that Ndibo believe that Ofonye Adazonwa that not one person cannot train or raise a child, which means that because the whole entire community contributes in raising a child, which is the entire community talking about the elders. Now, when a, a certain child gets to that position to be an elder, he or she is supposed to give back to the community. That's the evil perception. Now, another thing that I was saying here is that. These men are supposed to basically be in their villages, in their communities, holding ancestral positions. Or, these events should be held in Igbo land. That way, many of the Igbo in the diaspora who have not, don't have the opportunity to come home, would come home. At least it is going to foster some kind of uh, tourism in Igbo land. Now, instead of, you know, them basically paying for this masquerade, and able entertainers to come up upstate and perform for them, they can basically bring home these events that they basically do in the states. Now, the second uh, group that you know participated in this argument, or those are other groups that contribu contributed, were of the notion that you do not tell a person how to live his or her life, especially when you're dealing with an adult. You don't tell an adult, okay, come and live your life this way, come and behave in this way, and all those things. Now, the next group are also talking about something about insurgency, the insecurity in the East. Now, some of us, even those that are basically um, at the other, other point of this argument, trying to drag everybody back home, are also saying something, that most of them have not even come back to their villages because of, especially if you're, if you're, if you're, living, if you're from Imo state, Many people have not gone home, even while being in the country. Now, for those in the state, it becomes some kind of um, a hypocrisy. You've not gone to your village, but you want others to go back. So it's it was kind of pushing us back and front in this um, this um, argument. Now, some, the, uh, this other group also said something. They said that um, we do not, we cannot judge this man by twenty watching five minutes video. Because some of them are active members, even in absentia, which means that directly or indirectly, they would could be sponsoring um, children, giving scholarship to their relatives, or uh, basically contributing in their umuna, in their society, in their village, one, one way or the other. So these are things that we should basically kind of, um, you know, heed or basically um, think of when we make or we try to basically blame and. You know, hold people on some kind of a moral ground. The truth is that these kinds of uh, arguments, it's it's an emotional one, and there are no victors, there are no vanquished. 
because depending on how you're seeing it this is how you're going to basically say okay look at it but let's look at this thing from a historical context let's look at it from a historical context and maybe from there we could basically understand better and try not to always judge people because i believe that for some reason when you act there are, there is something that is pushing you there is something that is making you to think in a certain way do it a certain way especially when you know it's something that you cannot even explain and in this case i would say here that migration exploring or trying to see other things is something that it has been ingrained into the Igbo dna it is something that our ancestors practiced so it is part and parcel of us fundamentally in the Igbo, we are explorers fundamentally in the Igbo, we are migrants this is why a handful of us when we eventually leave a certain location and you know we move from and we go to another community we become orchids there we blossom we thrive if we move into a desert we develop it into a city just that it is sad that we do these things in other communities in other places that are not indigenously Igbo, but we've refused to do it in our own motherland but one thing in the Igbo we are known for is when we move into another community or an environment, we make it better. We gather, we overpopulate, it becomes a community for us. So when we look at the history of some of our communities, we we'll understand that some of our ancestors moved and settled in some of our current communities. And they did it with their deities and offer. When they were migrating, they picked up what they had. They picked it up and went into another community and reinstituted it and re enshrined it. And in some situations, they met up with um, landed or land or foreign spirits that they met in some of those locations. And they went into an agreement with them. Them teaching them how to till the land, how to live in harmony with nature and the spirits within that environment. Then they add them, they adopt them into the ancestral forces of that community, whatever name that they are going to call it. And historically, in a navy, when they migrated, they came with Eze, Eze Navy and Eze Mewi Eze Roga. These are the deities that they came with. Now, when they got into a navy, they established a spiritual foundation, a spiritual system, and they began to practice and enjoy the benefits of the spiritual foundation that they have laid once they migrate to a recent or a new environment. So historically, you could say that Ndibo were explorers and we traveled from one place to another. When we move, we establish, we don't conquer. We don't conquer. It's important for us to know this. We do not conquer, but we integrate ourselves. So when we see the, you know, Igbo communities like this, it should not be something for us to be dismayed. It's not something for us to be angry about. We need to understand that there are things that are push you into doing things that you do. And that's the Igbo, Igbo-ness, Igbo spirit in us. Making these men to basically move into um a new environment and establish themselves from a community and they're now adopting some of those ancestral practices cultural i don't know about spirituality but i know that some of their children and the descendants of ex slaves are looking into the evil spiritual system we have this proverb only one naye ebonaga naye awaye when you tell your father where you're going to, your father will tell you what to say when you get there. Now, mostly we use this proverb when we try to say uh, you want to migrate to a foreign land and you first of all go to your ancestral altar, your Ndiche, you inform them. Now, the rationale there is that already there is the essence of Ndi, Ndi Ibu, maybe ex slaves that died, that took with them the spirit of their ancestors with them. And some of them were consecrated in European lands. 
So once we are, we're telling them, when you tell your ancestors where you're going, they communicate, they communicate this intention that you're laying before them to the ancestors, only the ancestors over there, our child is coming. We are coming, not just our child, we are coming. Do us this way, treat us this way, help us with this, help us with that. So this is the, the essence of this Igbo adage. Only one naya born and then naya wa yeho yeho no uru. So if we look at, you know, during the slave era, our ancestors did not forget their deities. And some of them took in their hearts, embodying the essence of our spirituality. Some of them even carved images of the Achi, images of a deity they know. Because when you get to a foreign land, religion or some kind of a spirituality moved. So you see some little, little communities. Let's talk about the Yoruba, Ijeshe. The Yoruba people, their spirituality is quite popular amongst um, the Yoruba diaspora. Now, most Igbo diaspora that I've talked to will tell me that, oh, they, they've you know, gone through Hinduism. In Yoruba mythology, but I'm Igbo, so I want to understand Igbo because I cannot be practicing uh, Ijeche mythology. I have to practice my own cosmology, my own spirituality. So this is what is playing here. Now, there, over there, the, our ancestors that were taken during the slave era embodied, took with them their spirituality and were able to practice with the little, little things they saw in their environment. But it happens. So when they are embodying this essence of our spirituality, therefore they've already established an unconventional Igbo ancestry and root. Which means that we, we don't have to, Igbo people don't have to predominantly own an environment. And mind you, when an Igbo person buys a land and performs the rites of Igbo one on that piece of land, Fundamentally, that land belongs to that individual, his ancestors, and his predecessors. So this is where we perform the Igbo rites of Igbo one. Because as you're doing this, you're inviting your around more, the Ezubezu of your ancestors, whether it is foreign or otherwise. So when they are, you know, when they are when, in during the display, when they are slave ancestors, were basically embodying the essence of now, Igbo spirituality, unconventionally, they were laying a spiritual foundation, just like our ancestors did when they migrated from their root community to another community. And technically, when they were doing these migrations, they picked, you can pick up an unzu from a shrine and use that unzu to raise an altar that is dedicated to a particular deity. Now, if I go home now and look for a deity in my place and I pick Nzu after performing some kind of rites with the deity and bring it to my probably my house, me, I'm not living in Igbo, Igbo land, maybe Lagos or Abuja, and I keep it there. And somebody that is spiritually active or awake would come to my house and sense that deity, the presence of a deity or that deity or it's the essence of any spirit and if the person is there if we are on a good term, the person will ask do you have so and so in your house? and I will say yes so these are how it was done unconventionally, but it is done so this is why their current descendants are waking up and apprenticing as mediums or deviants and yes, they have never been to Igbo land. Funny enough, when they talk to me, it's like, eh, is an Igbo related issue? Say, yes. I had an apparition, an ancestor told me, do this, do that. And when I cross reference it with my understanding of the Igbo system, I'm keen to say, yes, this is what is happening to you. But they've never been to Igbo land. So this means that when a Dibia, who is a migrant, who migrates has now been positioned to act as their emissary because the argument even went further to say oh how would they so very soon now Dibias would now 
go to a foreign land and practice. I know of a professor, after God is Dibia, after God is Dibia, the author, who is a renowned Dibia, is not in Nigeria. He's practicing in the state. Although, if there are some certain rituals or rites that he's supposed to perform, and it's something that he needs probably a son or anything, he finds a way. If you're in Nigeria, he will refer you, okay, do this, do that, go to this place, do this, do that. But some of them are practicing. Now, we don't know the agreement that they had with their around more. So we don't judge. So these kinds of people are over there and they are now acting as emissaries to these individuals with evil roots and evil descent. So we don't have to judge every time. There are reasons. So them moving, they are doing the same that our ancestors did. Even if they decide that they're not, they're not going to come back for whatever reasons, it is not something new to me. So fin finally, um, we need to remember that we are called Umuibo because we are directly tied to this race, Ibo. What makes us Ibo is our tie to our ancestor, Ibo. And wherever we embody the Ibo spirit, whether it is metaphorically or physically, we have to and we remember our roots and carry our Ibo spirit and Ibo spirits, Ibo spirits and spirits which is you know behaving representing rapping vibing as only Igbo, and also carrying out or carrying on the Igbo's ancestral forces ancestral familiar spirits in those in the many awuchi alose abara anyamunese all these entities we are fundamentally carrying on everything in the Igbo are known for Especially when we find a way to pass on these traditions, these practices to the next generation. This is what we are doing. We are embodying the evil spirit. So it does not necessarily matter if this group of men decide to migrate and develop and form a community there. It does not really matter. Now what I would never I agree with is an Ndibo or Onyibo in a diaspora being an Eze in whatever capacity. If you want to rule a people, go back home and rule them. You cannot be an Igwe, an Eze, or hold a very spiritual relevant position. And you will tell me that you're in the state, Ndi Nache, and Ronofia. No. You have to be in that community. So if you're a monarch, you don't have any business being in the diaspora. You should be at home. So, but aside this person or this in the or in the Igwe, aside them, the Igbo elders that are over there in the state, I would recommend you and I will clap for you. And I will say, na onya na jide koji. So I'm going to say, continue promoting the Igbo spirit. And do not forget us that are back home. Do not forget us. Contribute in your society, in your community, actively, directly or indirectly. And for us here, back in the homeland or in the mother motherland, we need to learn how to accommodate other people. If for any reasons that the ancestors of the spirits need them to establish themselves in the homeland or motherland, they will drag them back. Our people would always say, Don't insult whom or a person whom his chi or her chi has not forsaken. So if the spirits allow them to basically thrive, because everybody will not act in the certain way or do or see things in, 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 in the same way. If we all do, then we are mindless and we are godless. But because we are not, and we are coming from a people, a strong um, people, people that know and understand nature, nature would always move us. Flavor had this song, anywhere you go and you don't see an evil man, you need to run away from that place. I say, give bocha, bom bom bom, so from Kamakala statement, leave.
So this tell this is to tell you how far spread Ndibo are. And we form communities and we help ourselves and we identify ourselves as Ndibo. So Igbos in the diaspora, Now if you have any further thoughts on this, you can also um say what you want to or add to this. And until next time, don't forget to subscribe. Don't also forget to like and share. And until next time, yeah, that's the end.